Hello, welcome to this week's weekly charting analysis webinar with myself, Jasper Lawler. Right now we have the risk warning on the screen. We'll just get through that and get started shortly. Okay, it's quite a big week for trading this week. No less than potential Scottish independence from the UK, um, Federal Reserve meeting with the prospect of a potentially more hawkish FOMC, um, Bank of England minutes, um, the ECB introduced their TLTRO uh, bank loan program um, and show the uptake for that on uh, Thursday. And on the same day, we have the Swiss National Bank potentially um, setting negative interest rates. So quite a few things going on and uh, we'll cover some of the major asset classes and how they could be impacted by these events this week. Now firstly, think, just thinking about the, uh, the Scottish independence, probably the two markets to be most receptive or most reactive to um, to the vote would be the, the British pounds, particularly against the US dollar, but also against the euro and some of the other major trading currencies, and uh, the FTSE 100, um, the, the UK 100 as traded with CMC markets. So if we pull up those charts now, now this is a, a weekly chart of the pound against the US dollar. You can see that we've pulled, pulled higher just above this 160 level. We got as high as 172 um, in, in June and in the middle of July we tested it and have since plummeted having traded below this uh, rising trend line and we made a gap through the 38.2% retracement level. No surprise that it was at this level because um, uh, this was when, in the latest set of polls, um, it was the poll in which um, the the yes campaign was, was marginally ahead. I believe that was the, the YouGov poll. And um, the poll subsequently has suggested actually the no's are ahead. And the general bias out there does seem to be amongst business and investors that um, the no's will come out ahead and Scotland will vote against independence. Um, but that said, you know, the pound has, has been under pressure, but it has rebounded from some of these lows after after that poll and uh, general consensus pointing towards a, a no vote, but still definitely under pressure. And uh, this 160 does remain vulnerable. What, what we could see is, um, you know, often that first candlestick down to the support area, or potential support area at least, um, is not the very bottom. Um, particularly in the, if we're talking about a reversal in trend, not just, for example, here, um, you could just say this one one leg, uh, long leg doji type pattern uh, hammer um, was just a correction. Whereas if you look farther back in the chart and you're looking more at sort of uh, here, for example, you have a long leg down, a slight leg up, recovers a bit, then drops down again. So we could see something like that into the 160 level and the 200-day moving average, and this 61.8% retracement of the 2013 rally, and then a subsequent move higher. That would most likely be in the situation of a um, of a no, you know, a no vote. Uh, in which case, the you know, cable would be able to, to trade at higher levels. You feel like probably a yes vote uh, would be would be negative for cable though quite how negative and how far it can go down, it's hard to tell because there isn't really a precedent for a referendum on this scale um, in the past. We've had one in Quebec, but really not a substantial financial economy, and uh, nevertheless that was a no to independence anyway. So, so very hard to tell exactly how far this could move. 
you could theoretically see on a yes vote a drop all the way down to 150, a, a thousand pip plus move. Um, if we flip over now to the the FTSE, uh, sorry, the the UK 100. This is a the kind of shorter term picture. As you can see, we're kind of trapped into a, a slightly rising range here, with some kind of declines happening in the latter part of the range. But if we flip out to our longer term chart, we can see that really the 6900, as we've discussed on many times in the last uh, year plus, um, is the the key barrier, and we've run into it just short of it again. And now, on the shorter time frames, we're approaching this kind of rising trend line which could be part of a head and shoulders top pipe pattern um, and you can see an equivalent in the RSI has broken lower but it is still rebounding around that sort of 50% um, RSI level um, and market kind of still holding above it for the time being uh, closing above it at least but a close beyond there could put us down to the 200 day moving average uh, but in the context of a trading range, you know these um, trending uh, moving average type indicators are a bit more meaningless than in a, in a strong trend. So maybe some kind of support found there, particularly at the 6700 round number. But then you feel like a break from here could push us down towards these lows, towards this kind of 6600 type level. Uh, but again, given the significance of the um, the referendum. You know, 6600 may maybe not all that we would do on a on a yes vote. You know, we could see a drop all the way down to 6,000 pounds, which would uh, which would line up uh, with uh, these highs back here and uh, the low formed back in uh, June 2013. Now, the other big event this week is the the FOMC. Um, the Fed will um, likely not be raising rates. Um, they're still in the middle of uh, tapering their quantitative easing program. So what we're really expecting is a tapering of 10 billion US dollars um, in this month, then a tapering of another $15 in October, and that would be it. That would be the QE program done. And then at some subsequent date, that is when we'd actually see the, the hike in interest rates. So really what we're looking for now are just some clues as to the timing as to when that rate hike would take place. And there are some jitters in the market that a rate hike would uh, happen a bit sooner than previously imagined, just given the strength of some of the economic data coming from the US of late, particularly from the, the labor market, where the unemployment rate has steadily been decreasing. We did see a bit of a... Um, a bit of a sort of um, missed result from the non-farm payrolls with the print of um, just around 140k um, where it has been average topping over 200k but so far that's being dismissed as a bit of a kind of summer blip and um, not necessarily too much to worry about one data doesn't make a piece of data doesn't make a trend so um, definitely adds a bit of importance to the September number to see if that has continued um, next month but for the time being really um, the US economy does seem to be strengthening and um, even inflation was increasing um, so it's still a slight kind of taper off of that in the last month or so but still approaching the kind of levels that would um, prompt the Fed to action um, so one of the big things is um, there's been some discussion that the Fed might change the way they do their forward guidance again um, so uh, rather than kind of a discussion of a considerable time, uh, it might move to some more sort of uh, economic market based piece of data, perhaps, um, you know, where perhaps not explicitly an unemployment rate as was used in the past, but something that's not uh, time based, uh, which would leave them open to a bit more flexibility. So then it will be a matter of how they do that as to whether that's perceived as, as hawkish or, uh, or or dovish for the US dollar. And we've had a look at cable, but maybe if we bring up the euro, we can see just how, um, you know, we saw that big decline in the pound, but we can see a pretty similar looking thing in the euro. And um, you can see there's 
clear, distinct amount of correlation here. Um, a lot of this move has been dollar-based, as um, participants have um, started to believe that the U.S. are closer to a rate hike than perhaps previously imagined. So this is largely a uh, dollar-denominated move, and so depending on how the Fed do react this week could be the potential catalyst for whether this move accelerates or whether at these over overbought levels for the dollar or in the case of the euro US dollar that we're looking at oversold levels whether this proves the, the catalyst to, uh, to see a bounce back <coughs> so <coughs> one of the other things we'll be looking at in the meeting would be uh, obviously Janet Yellen's speech at the end um, how she orientates herself um, she tends to be on the more dovish end of the scale um, but um, obviously she has to be um, representing the board as a whole and so some of the members are becoming a bit more hawkish so we'll obviously be looking to see if there's any more dissent um, and then we'll also be looking at the, the dot chart as called um, to see where some of the members are placing their um, expectation of where interest rates will be at the end of 2015 and 16. 15 obviously been the more um, uh, up, uh, the closer date and of more interest and um, higher rates um, for the end of 2015 would suggest that the Fed is either going to um, hike rates sooner than previously expected and at a more measured pace or perhaps uh, not as soon but when they do at a quickened pace either which tends to be um, a bit more dollar hawkish and could see this this, this move further extended in the US dollar. Now, <coughs> well, given that we are on this uh, this euro chart, um, worth talking about the um, TLTRO loan program that the um, ECB will be looking at this week. But the thing is, it will be of, of interest to see what the take-up has been amongst banks to, to provide these kind of ch um, cheap loans um, but it's, um, it's also worth considering that the ECB obviously have now instituted a new, le instituted a new level of policy whereby they'll be uh, buying asset-backed securities and perhaps does um, decrease the significance of the, the TLTRA program and so perhaps the results on Thursday won't be as influential on markets. Arguably, if the Swiss National Bank did, as they've alluded to uh, at the end of last week, pursue negative interest rates, um, that that could end up being a bigger driver, particularly for the Euro Swiss. If we just pull that up now, there we go. It's obviously been a. So if you look on the uh, the longer term chart, it's obviously a completely flat chart because of the peg that the SMB have instituted against the Euro at the 120 level. And no surprise, really, that as the price has been approaching that 120 level, that's when uh, the S&P have, have come out and said that they would be willing to accept uh, negative interest rates as part of a policy tool to, to ease monetary policy. So um, that is what caused this, this pop-up in the price above the 21-day moving average and the Euro-Swiss and you know, should they actually institute such a policy, you can imagine we'd would be moving even higher. And that'd be a bit sort of the euro and uh, not so much for the, the Swiss franc. Um, obviously also, also worth considering that bubbling the background is always um, Russia's possible reaction to Western sanctions. Um, so far, we've we've not seen anything, and uh, that's generally supportive of the German DAX, where the German economy is more susceptible than others in terms of trade and energy relations with with Russia. Um, but uh, aside from that, um, really, we should um, flip over to uh, some of the equity indices here. Let's have a quick look. At, uh, since we've looked at the UK, we'll look over in the US. We can see there's been a um, slight sort of divergence, as it were, between the US dollar and equities, whereby, theoretically, 
a, um, the prospects of a more hawkish Fed would be um, negative for for equity markets, <coughs> as um, you know, equities, as we can see from these long-term charts, tend to do well <coughs> in a low rate uh, low rate environment, um, whereas uh, the dollar does not. And uh, you know the prospect of increasing rates is, is good for the dollar, not so much for equities. But the, uh, the the dollar has been has been rallying. But um, but equities are are all time highs as well. <coughs> we have seen a slight decline. You can see on the on the weekly chart. The uh, U.S. 30 on our charts at least engulfed the prior two weeks trading action. So that's a pretty bearish move, and that comes right at the previous high. Uh, formed in July, so a bit of a pullback, bit of a bit of uncertainty leading into the meeting, but nevertheless still close to all-time highs. Uh, whereas the dollars um, really rallied, and uh, you've seen a bit of capitulation in some of these other major currencies. So one of them needs to kind of reprice, and so it could be, again it could be down to this um, Fed meeting this week, as to which one is the one to actually um, be the one to react accordingly. We flip down to a shorter term chart. Let's see, we see we're in this consolidation area. When you're looking at these highs here, this kind of zone is currently offering support. We've not quite seen a close below there yet, but that could be the trigger for further moves down to the, the high there and then some of the lows that we saw in June and where we were able to break through in this latest rally, you see from this consolidation area here see that a bit better on the uh, the short term chart <coughs> be aware of a uh, this is kind of our trading range we've seen it at the bottom of the range kind of declining but we've seen the top of the range kind of declining with it should the top of that range break through could draw a line something along here excuse me chart just moved on me Breakthrough here, maybe a test down at the line again, could push us back up to the, the top of the range. Um, but that's maybe the kind of action that would happen um, before before any kind of major major data releases this week. Um, let's have a flip over to commodities um, because that's been a major area of action, um, somewhat correlated with the uh, strength in the dollar, or these dollar-denominated currencies are not faring so well. So let's just have a look at gold here. <coughs> now this is just something interesting to bear in mind. We don't always look at the monthly charts, but um, potentially this is what we're dealing with here. Gold is obviously sagging down towards the bottom of its range. We'll look at more closely at that in a minute. But we've seen a large decline, potentially bearish flag of some sort, bearish pennant perhaps, and then perhaps further move. And you'd be you'd be projecting that kind of move down below, and we really could see uh, a move back substantially below a thousand dollars per ounce um, should that kind of projection pattern work out. Now you can see slightly better on the, uh, the weekly chart that in this trading range we've seen one test of the, the bottom around 1180 and it looks like we could be in for another should this current trend continue but we've not been really able to successfully retest the highs there. Um, we didn't even quite make it to, to 1400 on the test in March and you know, just come when nowhere close in this latest rally in, in July. So weakness in the in the gold range. Not to say it can't bounce off 1180 and, and break straight through. It certainly can. But you have to say that the general bias looks, um, especially if the Fed are moving towards combating inflation with higher interest rates. Uh, you don't need an inflation hedge through gold if the Fed is is hiking rates. And uh, that you know the general situation looks kind of bearish for, for gold in the in the interim. Let's just drop down to daily charts so we can see that on a more zoomed in level. Um, you know, this was a major potential buying area, but really nothing happened there. 
Um, so that you know, this in, this this price action in itself is is really pretty bearish. Um, you know, you expect some sort of at least. I mean, we've got a bit of a bounce off the top, bit of a pull back into it, but really just straight through. And based on that, you'd assume probably the next level of support would be the, uh, the round number of 1200, and then that um, you know those multi-year lows just below that. Similar thing going on in silver. Let's have a quick look there. Silver even more so because silver does have a slight sort of uh, industrial element to it as well. So, um, given the the slowdown and the, the weak data that has been seen in, Ch in China uh, at the beginning of the week, at the weekend, uh, it's a weak industrial production and retail sales data there. Um, you know, that's not good for copper, not good for silver. These more industrial leaning metals and silver has pushed down to almost down to the low um, from, from June 2013 and you've heard that I've mentioned June 2013 a few times I mean that was uh, the beginning of the rally in stocks and, and when gold and silver kind of started to consolidate so not there yet uh, but again, similar picture with silver with, with declining peaks, generally kind of retesting the same area of support. This trend line is still kind of holding, so breakthrough there could give us a bit of a bounce in the interim, but we'd need to see something more substantial on the weekly chart to really be feeling confident about buying into the top of the range again. Flip over to crude oil, it's probably been the, one of the weakest markets out there. Um, worth bringing up a uh, chart pattern of mine that I had on the on the breakout, which was just this left shoulder, head, right shoulder. So that break of the trend line, the breakdown, the retouch of the trend line, which corresponded with a, a matching shoulder. And then using the height of the pattern from the head to the neckline, we projected down to this 100% level. And you can see it has perfectly hit that on the money um, and this was you know this was um, you know, these, these patterns don't always work out but uh, you know when they do you know they can be pretty pristine and uh, obviously that corresponds with that um, that low from back in uh, the beginning of the year so if we push much lower than here we're into new yearly lows for WTI and we can see on the long term chart that this actually this there is a bit of a trend line going through here with multiple touches so breakthrough down there could see us back down at $78, and uh, you could imagine even lower. There's a um, bit of a supply glut in oil at the moment, and we even had the, the OECD, the, the think tank, revising down its global growth forecast today, and uh, that's following multiple institutes, um, including the IMF and World Bank. Uh, general consensus is for weaker growth and you know as such weaker demand for petroleum products and uh, so you know lower demands um, higher supply uh, with no apparent supply disruptions from from Russia as yet um, then uh, you know that that speaks to, to lower prices but we are at a significant level and uh, you know it, we, we probably something to look for would be maybe a kind of basing type pattern and then maybe a catalyst for a breakout of the base would be some escalating tension with Russia, which you know they don't really seem um, like um, like coming down anytime soon. Um, no, neither party, nor the Western powers, nor Putin in Russia, look like backing down. And uh, tip tax sanctions are going to maybe eventually spill over into the energy market. We've already heard that uh, Poland. Uh, received 40% less uh, in, in imports from Russia, um, just uh, in the in the latest comments. So, if that's something that Russia plan to continue, you know that um, that could threaten the European economy and, and certainly could um, threaten supplies of oil. Okay.
I uh, think we'll call it a day for uh, for this week. Um, it's definitely going to be a busy one. Uh, careful trading around the uh, the Scottish referendum. It's it's going to be a, a kind of high risk, high reward type event most likely, um, particularly in the event of a yes vote. Um, but uh, you know, watch out for action in the British pound and the the FTSE. But then, uh, particularly if there is a if there's no vote, probably things will calm down a little bit subsequently. Uh, but if there is a yes vote, we could look for some spillover into other markets, foreign stocks with um, large UK businesses. Um, any impacts on credit ratings can spill over into other asset classes, bonds, etc. So, um, yep, could be interesting the following week should that uh, should that river, uh, vote follow through. Um, and then, in summary, for these um, FX trading, you know, we've got to look out for these central banks, particularly the FOMC and the and the Bank of England, and and their minutes um, coming through. Well, thanks again, uh, it's Jasper Lawler, market analyst here at CMC Markets. Good luck trading with us, Signing off. Thank you.